let's continue with the lesson 1.4 and look at this idea of cause and effect. And you may have heard the term causation or correlation does not imply causation, meaning that just because you see some relationship doesn't mean that one thing causes another thing to happen. So there's a big difference between observational studies and experiments, right? In observational studies, when we're not manipulating the variables, right? Um, what happens is we can't just, even though we've collected data and we haven't, uh, um, because we haven't manipulated in any way, it's hard for us to draw any causation, claim for causation that something causes something. We just see a correlation, right? And that's due to an unlimited number of what we call lurking variables. These other variables that actually may have an influence on uh, the response. So if you're thinking about explanatory and response relationships, just because we see some type of relationships or pattern within those two variables doesn't mean there's other vari there's not other variables or these lurking variables that could be the real reason why something's happening, right? And a classic thing is thinking about um, when ice cream sales increase, more children uh, drown in pools. And you're thinking, wow, what's the relate correlation between ice cream eating and, and drowning in pools? It, there really is a lurking variable is that more people eat ice cream when it's hot. And when it's hot, more people swim. And so that's a classic example of correlation does not ca uh, cause is, is correlation does not mean causation right there is a relationship more ice cream so many people eat more drowning deaths but it's not because of ice cream it's because it's summertime we're in an experiment right uh, in theory this is a way that we can identify how uh, um, one variable can cause another one right and it's in theory because we're controlling four things right we are um, manipulating the variables in ways, right, where maybe we can see, right, where one variable, right, the observed uh, explanatory variable results in a causation of the uh, um, response variable. And that was with experiments, if you think about it, right. So it's an important distinction between those two. As we can think about experiments, the importance of causing, uh, of of being able to conclude causation, there's some components of an experiment that we need to to think about, and they're listed here. Okay, um, and again, in this class, we don't get to do experiments, but you need to be aware of them, and we're going to read about them, and so you want to be able to think about some of these terms: randomization, right? Um, you want to randomize treatments, meaning that. Um, when you're going to do the experiment, who gets these treatments, as we talked about before a little bit? Who's going to get it? We want to randomize that process. And then you have to have control variables, okay? Uh, we want to control variables that are not factors, meaning that we want to, so um, you can see the example here, um, these control variables, okay? We want um, a good example stated here, right? So f some variables we might want to control when conducting experiments on a new drug. For people are their diet, sleep, and exercise. You want to study people who have, uh, that we've controlled for meaning that we want to study people who have the same diet, sleep the same amount, and exercise the same way. It's called control so that you can actually study um, the relationships or the results. Uh, other ideas, replication, um, really is this idea that whenever you get results we want to make sure that we can replicate those results on a different population to see if the results are similar and again that's happening with COVID-19 with drugs um, you may just do the experiment one time and say oh yeah it works but you want to be able to replicate it like a vaccine that's why it takes so long for a vaccine to come through um, blinding is a process where uh, many times you don't know uh, what treatment you're getting or even the, the researchers don't know who's getting the treatment so that there's no bias within that. And so you want to make sure, read this definition, but also think about this blinding aspect that you don't want people to know what's going on, right? You're going to treat them, but you don't want to know if they're getting what we call a placebo or they're getting the actual drug or the treatment because uh, you don't want false positives. You don't want people to think they're, they're if they, they know they're getting the drug, they may report out different ways or they um, 
it may affect the results versus a placebo is a fake treatment okay meaning that in um, sometimes you give people a fake drug or don't give them anything as a placebo it takes the place of it right just to see again are there any results some people get the drug some people get a placebo right something like a water pill or something like that uh, so keep that in mind and to finish this here looking at example two here draw a tree diagram that summarizes the weight loss study here's a sample that i that we're going to use this results here is that let's say we wanted to design a weight loss study i'm, I'm making this one up here six week study let's say controlling for the amount of time controlling for we want only people in their 20s and that they're 20 pounds overweight and so uh, we uh, gather gather 60 males and we give them a treatment what treatments we would get let's say it would be one of these treatments right one of these diets and exercises they would be treated and then after six weeks we look at the um, response variable the total weight loss and we would see that now be able to control we've controlled for things and see if one of these actually um, produces which one actually produces the best weight loss